Hey, how's it going everyone? Welcome back to the channel. I hope you're doing well out there. Now, it's been a minute since I refreshed my build for the channel. In fact, the last time I did it was when this case launched. This was the Fractal Design Meshify S2. Uh, fine case. Admittedly, it's still a great case. And if it wasn't for it being so gosh darn big, it would still be my daily driver. But times and my needs have changed, and I need something that feels just a bit less claustrophobic on my desk as a result. I mean, you're seeing how big it is on this desk right now, and this is the exact same desk that I use for my main setup. So of course, when Fractal Design let me know about a new case that was gonna be coming out that would go absolutely perfectly in place of this one, I had to do something a little special for it. Specifically, I wanted to get some custom braided cables done for the build and do an entire setup themed around the new case that I'm gonna be using. Now, this video is primarily going to focus on the build itself. The setup is going to be discussed in more depth along with desk cable management in a future video, so stay tuned for that one. But if you follow me on Twitter, or if you stick around towards the end of the video, you will get some teaser shots of what the new setup looks like. Now, before we go any further, I do wanna give a huge shout out to Fractal design for sending over the new case that we'll be using in today's build, as well as the Ion 760p power supply that we'll be using to power everything. Strictly speaking, there was nothing wrong with my old power supply at all, and in fact, it's been repurposed as my test bench power supply. Thing is though, I needed something that was physically smaller for the case that we're migrating to, and I needed it to be fully modular as well. Not only that, but I needed it to be capable of accepting custom cables from one of the more reputable and more easily accessible cable uh, sleeving companies out there. In my case, I went with Cable Mod and got some carbon colored uh, cable sleeves done to complement the build that we'll be working with today. And I did just wanna mention real quick, um, it's honestly kind of a shame that I don't get to use the stock cables that came with the Ion because these things are extremely flexible and easy to work with. And if this was all you needed for the build that you were working with, these cables are probably some of the nicest I've ever felt for a power supply. But anyway, let's get on with the reveal, shall we? Let me introduce you to the rebirth of my personal rig, Caprica 6, in the Fractal Design Define 7 Compact White. Now I'm gonna lightning round through some of the things with this case because this is just a recoloring of the existing Define 7 Compact that's already out there and that case has already been reviewed. But I am gonna touch on the key features and my building experiences with this case as it pertains to this build. You'll also pardon me if I have my notes directly out in front of me. I simply do not have any more storage up here. I need to upgrade my SSDs. All right, so the first thing to note with this chassis Every body panel on this just about 
is removable and easily so. Both of the side panels are also toolless and can be removed just with one hand. I don't necessarily recommend doing this because of the way this latches into the bottom of the chassis, you can't really rest the panel there but you could do in a pinch. But yeah, fit and finish in general throughout the chassis looks really good. The quality of the paint, the plastics that are used, all of it. Now again, the roof panel is modular. As you can see here, I've just taken it off the top of the case. It's actually really straightforward to do. All you have to do is sort of just get underneath the, uh, the edges of the panel and just get some lift on it. It's just got these metal tabs that lock into um, these clamps along the uh, the top edge of the chassis. Now by default this case ships with a sound dampened panel that doesn't have any ventilation in it. This panel comes packaged separately but in the same box along with the accessory kit and I have to say the packaging was actually really well done with this. Also worth noting the accessory kit does come with of course everything that you would need to get basically any build going in this chassis along with a microfiber cloth for cleaning off the glass and the front panel and a little uh, plastic tool to work with the motherboard standoffs if you need it but I frankly don't really trust uh, plastic motherboard standoff tools, so maybe you look into something else long term. Now the front panel does admittedly require a little bit of force to get off, but it's nothing that I would call uh, excessive really. Um, all you have to do is pull out the bottom mounted dust filter first, and that gives you access to a little grabby point underneath the front panel. You just yank it off, easy peasy, and the front IO stays put. Now, while we're on the topic of front IO, that's actually one of the main draws for this chassis for me. It's one of the only compact ATX mid tower that has this frankly exceptionally robust array of front IO consisting of two USB 2 ports, two USB 3s, one type C port, audio and mic and power and reset buttons. But back to the front panel, because this is something of a point of controversy with cases like this anymore. It's a closed off front panel. It's got this admittedly gorgeous uh, brush aluminum uh, front panel on there with just this modest F stamp in the bottom corner uh, for the Fractal Design logo. And apart from that, there's no other embellishments other than the white power LED to let you know the computer's on. So when going into a case like this, you maybe want to consider that your hardware configuration, the harder you run it, the more heat it produces, the more airflow demand you're gonna have for your system, and the more a case with this kind of airflow configuration makes a bit less sense. But we'll talk more about the temperatures for this particular build uh, later on in the video. Now, one thing that does help the front panel here is the fine mesh filters that they use throughout the entirety of this chassis. It's exceptionally fine mesh. So there's really very little that's obstructing the airflow that is able to get in through the front panel. So. I don't really see much of a need to remove it. Now, as far as out of the box fan configurations concerned, you get a Dynamic X2 GP14 mounted front and center, and it's all white. You also get a 120 millimeter variant of that same fan mounted at the rear. The 140 millimeter fan is rated for 1000 RPMs. This fan's rated for 1200 RPMs. These are exceptionally well-built stock case fans. They're quiet, they don't necessarily flow a lot of air though. So just keep that in mind if you're buying this chassis and you want to use these fans with your build. As far as total system fan compatibility is concerned, the front will let you hold 320 millimeter fans or 240 millimeter fans, again with the 140 millimeter included, and the top will allow you to hold up to 220 or 140 millimeter fans. The rear will only accommodate a 120 millimeter fan size, and if you're not using the hard drive cage that's mounted in the bottom of the chassis, you can mount another 120 millimeter fan there. Now as far as radiator fitment goes, the front will allow you to hold up to a 360 millimeter or 280 millimeter radiator. It is worth noting that with the Celsius Plus S28 Prisma that we're using in this build, there is exactly enough room between the motherboard tray and where this all-in-one mounts that you can actually run the cables between the fans and the motherboard tray. It's weird. It's almost as if the all-in-one and the case were made by the same company and were intended to be used with one another. Wild. The roof will unfortunately only comfortably hold a 240 millimeter radiator. Reason being, Technically, there is enough height to mount a 280 millimeter radiator up here, 
but there's not enough width to the chassis. Remember, this is narrower than the Meshify S2 that I migrated from. So what will happen is if you try and mount a 280 millimeter radiator up here, there is a very real possibility you may not be able to route your cables through the roof uh, cutouts over here for your EPS 12 volt. It's possible that depending on the motherboard configuration, you might be able to get away with this, but as a general rule, a 280 millimeter radiator is just not realistically going to fit in the roof of this chassis. And the rear does of course also hold a 120 millimeter radiator if for whatever reason you want to do that. All right, so as you can clearly see, the cable management situation isn't all gloom and doom back here. Uh, there's a good amount of space uh, if you're thinking everything out as you're going along and doing the build. That's sort of the key thing with this case. You have to really carefully think about how everything comes together in order for things like cable management, radiator fitment, and all the rest to sort of make sense sometimes. The hard drive cage is probably the biggest point of contention that I had with this chassis. And Greg Salazar actually had a similar problem when he first reviewed the original Define 7 Compact because again, it's the same chassis. This area just doesn't have a whole lot of room to work with here. And the only way you can even get this bay out in the first place is if you lift it out through the, uh, the power supply shroud inside the chassis or move it out the back through the opening in the power supply uh, mounting area. Now, all of that said, it is a, an exceptionally well-built hard drive bay and it's uh, it's got some really well built cages um the only other thing that i'm struggling with is what i had to do to get everything positioned so that i could get this kind of cable management going back here i had to move the cage all the way to the front of the chassis for my build it's fine because i'm only using one platter drive here but if i wanted to use a second platter drive Technically, I could mount it right here, but I wouldn't be able to get it out because it would conflict with the chassis right here. So I'm hoping that if there are further iterations on this chassis down the line, the Fractal Design makes some revisions to this area down here, just to make it a little bit more uh, user-friendly, because really, it's because of this area that this honestly becomes uh, a little bit daunting for a first time system builder. Now it also comes with uh, these Velcro straps over here and these Velcro straps along the front of the chassis uh, that also have these uh, cable channels that are pre-installed. It's a nice idea. Uh, I guess depending on the hardware you're using, these can be more or less useful, but I'm personally of a mind I can, I can take it or leave it. Uh, they can be removed. They just kind of pinch and unclip from the chassis, and then you are still left with adjacent uh, traditional cable tie mounting points that you can still run these Velcro straps through and get everything strapped flat to the chassis. All right, so as far as temperatures were concerned, I didn't do any sort of fancy test battery on this chassis or whatever. It's my personal computer, so I tested it like it was my personal computer and did my personal computer things on it. During my typical gaming sessions, I never saw my RTX 2070 Gaming Z get any hotter than 68C. That was with the fan spinning at about 1900 RPM utilizing MSI Afterburner's automatic fan curve. As far as my CPU is concerned, we were seeing about 60 to 64 C on average during most gaming sessions with my boost clocks regularly hitting and staying at 4.3 gigahertz across all cores and threads. Now it is also worth noting that those CPU temperatures are had on a Celsius plus S28 Prisma that is fixed pump speed and fan speed at 75% at all times. As far as some light Adobe Premiere work is concerned, um, running transcodes for making proxy files for my workflow, the processor never really saw much hotter than 54C on average. This computer just does not really get all that hot but these components don't necessarily generate a ton of heat either. So I can get away with having a closed off front panel and slower running fans and not really have any major issues. I mean, even if ambient temperatures uplift four or five degrees over what they were when I did this testing, I, I wanna say ambient was about 20 C during my testing. I still have plenty of thermal overhead for all of my components here, so I'm not worried about anything. So I guess it's conclusion time now, and if you haven't figured it out just yet, I'll spell it out for you. 
I am a huge fan of this chassis. It's not perfect, but there's a lot that I really, really like about it. First of all, I'm obviously a huge fan of the compact dimensions here. This saved a tremendous amount of space on my desk. I'm a huge fan of the fit and finish for everything. I'm a huge fan of the fact that I didn't really lose a whole hell of a lot of thermal performance. If anything, my temperatures have uplifted maybe four degrees C at most, nothing that I'm really concerned about. And I love that the glass has absolutely zero tint on it, so you can cleanly see everything on the inside of this case. A little bit of light goes a really long way in here. Now, one of the biggest drawbacks of a chassis like this is this is not necessarily something that I would consider as being intended for a beginner system builder. There's a couple of considerations you have to make when you're building in this chassis, and because you have to really think about how you're putting the parts in the computer, it's not as friendly to a first-time system builder. A first-time system builder wouldn't necessarily know that this hard drive cage can only be removed one of two ways. Even if you're reading it in an instruction booklet, it just may not occur to you during the build process until after you've hit a point where, oh, you've got to disassemble half of the build now just to get to the hard drive cages. And as far as quiet is concerned, that's gonna be largely a matter of where you have this case set up and the hardware you've got inside of it. All of the hardware in this case makes very little noise to begin with, but what was most important to me about this case is where I'm using it. My main setup is in the living room of our house. And when I'm sitting at the computer, sometimes there'll be someone sitting behind me on the couch watching TV. Because this case has a flat front panel with sound damping material there, I'm actually blocking a lot more of the fan noise from bleeding over towards that couch area, which makes it easier for someone that's sitting there to hear the TV over the sound of my computer. So to that end, this case really kind of does it all for me. And the setup that I wound up building around this turned out phenomenal. But it too is not perfect, and it's got some quirks to it, but we'll discuss that in the next video because I've already kept you for far too long as it is. Thank you so much for watching. Toss a thumbs up on the video if you liked what you saw. Make sure you hit that sub button and the bell icon to get notified every time I upload fresh content. And before we go, one more huge thank you to Fractal Design just for sending over the Define 7 Compact in white and the Ion 760p power supply. The build would not have been possible without your help. Anyway, I'll catch you all next time. Take it easy.